Hello everyone, and welcome to a 2020 Buzzwordathon reading vlog. I'm pretty much brand new to BookTube, so this is the first ever readathon I've participated in, and if you don't know what a readathon is, it's basically a thing that is hosted by some YouTubers or BookTubers or Bookstagram people who decide on a theme for the readathon and then it lasts a week or a month and you read books based on the theme. So Kayla from Books and Lala has been doing this buzzwordathon for a few years and basically she chooses a buzzword and you read books with that buzzword in the title and this year the word is night. The readathon started on Monday and ends on Sunday and it's Thursday already? I was going to read four books but my schedule got all out of whack but I'm still gonna try to read three books over the next, what is that, four days? That's pretty ambitious. So as I'm filming this I'm already one hour through reading Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare himself. I read and actually did a lot of Shakespeare through my theater program back in high school, so like I'm pretty familiar with it and I love reading the tragedies like Macbeth, Hamlet, actually very good reads. But I often struggle with reading the comedies, like The Comedy of Errors was an absolutely terrible read even though I'm sure seeing it live would be pretty awesome. So I'm liking it so far but I will come back with thoughts later. Then in a really wacky idea I think I'm going to try to read two books today and next I am reading Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vuong. I don't read a ton of modern poetry because I think my big academia brain has kind of been sullied by like the rupee cars of the world whose style I really don't like, but I've heard really good things about his poetry and I'm very excited to dive into this. And then the book I am most excited for is If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvino. One of my best friends recently read this book and he said I would love it. I like know the basic premise that it's a lot of books or short stories, not a lot of books, it's a lot of short stories basically in one novel. Yeah, um, If on a Winter's Night a Traveler turns out to be not one novel but ten, each with a different plot, style, ambience, and author. And this notion of like one author having these different styles in one book is very interesting to me. I love things that are kind of piecemeal like that, so I'm very excited about this. So, Night. Uh, I'd read The Night Circus but that's already one of my favorite books. Um, and I have Night by Ellie Wiesel that I was gonna read and I'm not reading it for this video but we'll hopefully get to it sometime in the future. So let's read some night books. Does anyone want to explain to me why I'm so bad at remembering to give like the most basic of plot summaries when I'm talking about a book? Because I haven't told you at all what Twelfth Night is about. Twelfth Night is about this woman, Viola, and she and her brother Sebastian get separated on the shipwreck. Viola thinks her brother is dead. While she's on land, she dresses up as a man and starts working as a page under the Duke, who is currently in love with Olivia. So Viola, dressed as a man, goes to Olivia and basically tries courting Olivia for the Duke, but oh no 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 no! Olivia ends up falling in love with Viola dressed as a man and hilarity ensues. The thing is, I like Twelfth Night. I like the plot. I think it's clever. I think it's very Shakespeare. It's got the classic, there's a clown, there are royals, there are commoners, there's everything you can want from a Shakespeare play. And narratively, I think this does that trope pretty well. Like again, this is sort of similar in ways to the comedy of errors, different beats, but it has that same kind of like, oh, mistaken identity thing going on, also the same as what as you like it. So like he likes playing with this and I think he does it pretty well here. The problem is, and this isn't Shakespeare's fault, is that I don't think this is meant to be read. Like it's meant to be performed. You're meant to experience the comedy of like Malvolio tripping all over himself and these mistaken identities and seeing Sebastian come on land and suddenly Olivia falls for Sebastian because she thinks that it's Viola and Sebastian being like, okay, let's get married. And I just don't think it translates super well to just being read. Uh, and that's just a problem with reading plays sometimes. So Twelfth Night, good. Reading it, only so-so. One final thought, also this book is one of like five books I own that I stole from the basement of my high school. So it has that like really nice was printed in like the 70s and has been sitting around sand for decades scent and I love it. It's only like five o'clock because reading Shakespeare is pretty quick so there is a chance I can read this, film about it, talk about it today which would be really nice because then that would give me like two and a half whole days to really take my time with this which is a little bit longer and I think will be potentially more rigorous. I don't know. I have actually no idea how rigorous this is going to be so 
let's get to more reading. I have returned to you later in the day on Thursday, pleased to announce that I have thoroughly enjoyed Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vuong. I feel like my literary roots are in poetry, and yet I don't set aside enough time to read it. Like, I'm looking at my bookshelf over there, and there are a few collections that I've really been obsessed with in the past few years, like A Coney Island of the Mind by Lawrence Ferlinghetti is the single best poetry book I've ever read, and I got like 20 pages into Patterson by William Carlos Williams before I forgot to keep reading it, that I'm gonna read at some point, hopefully later this year, or maybe next year and I loved that. So like, poetry is something near and dear to my heart and I'm glad that the Buzzwordathon gave me a chance to check this out. Ocean Vuong is confronting a lot of things and I think a lot of things that are often not explored. There's this line in one of the poems, an American soldier fucked a Vietnamese farm girl, thus my mother exists, thus I exist, thus no bombs equals no family equals no me. And I feel like this collection just does a really interesting and beautiful job of exploring war while exploring identity and like there's this very I feel like interesting is the wrong word because it diminishes his experience but I just feel like this was a very thoughtful um exploration of how these like warring personal and political opinions can exist when I was on Wikipedia just looking into like him and his life I saw a critic praise his sequencing and I didn't think a lot of it until I started really getting into the book and I realized that the first half I feel like there's this focus on water and the sea and this very fluid thing and the book almost gets harder and more concrete like there are more motion notions of fire and and hot things and the sea kind of diminishes almost as the book goes along though there's still these glimpses of the water and i actually think that's really brilliant like i've never paid attention that much to sequencing in a poetry collection because as a poet myself whenever i've just like Put them into a word document is just chronological and i'm an editor and i see a lot of poetry collections where it's just like yeah these are in here in the order that i wrote them but to kind of witness this thematic up and down through the collection i think it was just very smart how he did that as for his actual poetic style i think i'm a little bit more inclined towards his prose poetry um like some of the poems like immigrant high bun and notebook fragments i feel like were that more prose poetry style as opposed to just classic poetry and I think that works a little bit better for him. In fact, I'm actually really excited to one day read um, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, which was his debut novel. I think occasionally in his poems, he has a tendency to have a line that you can tell is just there for dramatic effect. And that's not a problem you want to affect your readers. But I think the best moments of this are when his stories just feel very honest. Not all poetry has to be non-fictional. Not all stories have to be autobiographical. But I think obviously this poetry is based off of his real life and is dealing, getting through a lot of the complicated issues. And I think just the, the most moving moments are when I could tell that the emotion happened first and then the language as opposed to an idea for the language happening first and fitting it into your story. Lines like, your father is only your father until one of you forgets. Who boy, that's just, that's insane. That's like, that's something that stopped me. I had to grab my pencil from across my bed and I was like, yeah, we need to underline this right now. Two books in one day, or I guess a play and a poetry book in one day, which is exciting, which means I have basically two and a half days to read If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. So I will be trying to take my time, but that still means about 150 pages a day. So I will get back to you with thoughts on this. Hello everyone and welcome to Saturday. I am 50 pages into If on a Winter's Night a Traveler, and I have learned some things about myself. The first thing is that I think I love metafiction. Uh, I love House of Leaves. I love Pale Fire. I'm obsessed with this. There's a book that I read for an upcoming video that is also doing something similar. We're like, books within a book, and I love that. Thing two is that maybe it's time for me to get into postmodernism. Like, I was loving so many things about this book, and I was like, what's the deal here? And so sometimes when I'm reading a book, I read like the top blurb on a Wikipedia page, and it was like, yeah, this is one of the postmodernist novels. And then I googled postmodernist novels, and I was like, wow, these all seem really good, and I've read some of these, and they're all really good, and I want to read more of them. So it's time for me to get into postmodernism. But before we can do that, let's talk about what this book's about. The book is split into many sections, and it goes back and forth between chapter one, and then a chapter that has like a proper title, then chapter two, then a pro chapter that has like a proper title and all the numbered chapters follow you who is basically reading trying to read a book initially if on a winter's night a traveler by italo calvino and 
through all these like publishing snafus, you keep picking up books that are different books. And then the named chapters are like the chapters of the book that you are picking up. Granted, I'm on page 50 of a 260 page book, so maybe there's more to it, but I guess that's at least the spoiler-free premise of the book. And the writing is just stunning. It's one of those books where like, I will read a sentence, put it down, and say what aloud, and like sit there looking at the ceiling for a few minutes. I have underlined things such as, the thing I'd like most in the world is to make clocks run backward, you're not like allowed to say that in a book. Um, Jesus Christ, I would like to swim against the stream of time. Like, I'm, I'm upset. I'm upset and I'm having such a good time. And then you have these named chapters which are all written so well, but I think it's just brilliant that you get to watch Calvino use his brilliant, like, talent for writing and really have each of these chapters sound like it was written by a different author. Like, I love her, but Miss Virginia Woolf, she's always gonna sound like Virginia Woolf. Like, I pick up a book and I can, like, figure out who it's written by within, like, the first paragraph I read because she's just so distinct. And I think there are ways in which Calvino's style is distinct so far, but also he's able to mask it through this plot device that he's using, and it's just so well done. And then the story of you, it's not just like, you pick up a book, whatever, like there's an actual plot going on there between like, this you who is like this man who meets this woman, like there's an actual story going on there too, and I'm very excited to see where that takes me. And I think it'd be very easy for this to just come off as gimmicky, like, someone just had this clever idea to have like, ooh, ten different books in one, and someone keeps picking up the wrong book. Like, it would be easy for that to just be cheap. But I think what this book does well, and also what I think Pale Fire does so well, is that I feel like they're actually exploring the process of writing and of readership and of communal readership, and like, what do these things look like when they get confused and, and when they're interspersed in weird ways, and I just, I think it's actually just, it's actually exploring things, it's not just trying to be clever. So my plan is to read this for the rest of the day and then check back in tomorrow morning when I've finished it, and then this video will be out, and I will have participated in the Buzzwordathon, and that will have been awesome. Hello everyone, it is Sunday morning slash afternoon, and I have officially finished If on a Winter's Night a Traveler, and kind of as predicted within like the first 20 pages, this was a five-star book. It seriously hits all of the beats that I want from books. It has the most beautiful writing I have read in a very long time, and that's something that really matters to me. Like, I don't love empty purple prose, but I do love when the words can like seriously transform you into like the astral plane of not being able to process what you're reading because it's so beautiful. I name dropped her earlier, but that's part of why I love Virginia Woolf. It's part of why I love pretty much all the writers that I'm like really obsessed with. Um, and I think Calvino's writing is just like so stunning. And then to elaborate a little bit more on the plot, I feel like I didn't give a great explanation of it yesterday. Basically, we start off as you, and you're picking up this book, and then you get like one chapter into the book, and you realize that there's been a misprint. So you go back to the publisher, and you're trying to describe like what book you think you might be reading, and the guy at the bookstore is basically like, oh yes, this is the book that I think was accidentally misprinted in this book. So he sends you over to get another book, you start reading that book, and you realize it had nothing to do with the previous book you had read. So like when I say like publishing snafus, it's not all publishing snafus because at some point he goes to like a professor and the professor's like, I think you're talking about this book, try this. And it, you just keep picking up the wrong book. And so each chapter in this book is basically just a different chapter from the different books that you, the character in this book, picks up. And like truly as the back of the book says, together they form a labyrinth of literatures. And I just feel like it's all interwoven so brilliantly. Like. The if they're all chapters of different books, then theoretically they all could have been sequenced in like completely random ways, but I feel like the way that Calvino like takes you on this journey through these different books, just you you almost follow this complete narrative even though they're disparate stories. And I really feel like throughout all of it there's just like this emphasis on what the process of being a reader is like. I mean like the end of the book just has this extreme emphasis on communal readership because you and the girl that you meet in the bookshop in like the second chapter or something like that is a story that gets cultivated through the book and like what is, what is, is there such thing as communal readership and if so, what does it look like? I don't know. I, I really, really loved this. I think that I might have to do a deep dive into like the classic postmodern texts. I do own one of the postmodern classics, Infinite Jest. I got 50 pages into it and the only reason I stopped is because I just like got busy, but 
I have debated doing a nice little infinite dress reading vlog, so if any of you would be interested in that, watching me, a 22-year-old nerd, read infinite dress for the first time, please let me know. So that has been the Buzzwordathon. Um, I'm very excited to watch some other people's vlogs. Um, I believe Caleb was reading Night Sky with Exit Wounds, so I'm excited to see what she thought of that and if we like saw, thought similar things. But that's all I've got for you. Uh, I will see you guys next time.